Guy Eastman here. It's a backcountry bow hunt for elk on this episode of Eastman's Hunting TV. Well, here we are. First evening of the hunt. We're headed into the uh, Idaho backcountry. It's a public land do-it-yourself hunt in the uh, high country Idaho. So tonight's the first evening. We're getting towards the end of September. So I think these bulls are just starting to really kick in. We've got bluebird skies. We're supposed to have really good weather all week. Uh, but temperature is supposed to come down. So it's gonna be probably, hopefully perfect. I know the timing's perfect. If we can just get some cool nights mixed in there, these bulls are gonna crank up and we're gonna have a killer hunt. So looking forward to it. It's time to get dirty and hopefully bloody now. On this hunt, we're going in as a group of three. Normally we only have two guys, but this time we decided to take three. Just give us that little edge to lure in one of these big weary bulls within bow range. After only a few miles into country, we got an answer to our first call. But after setting up the spotting scope and putting it on this bull, he's not quite what we're looking for, and we think we can do a little better. So we packed up and kept making boot tracks. That night, we made it in about three or four miles and out to this perfect glassing point. We can see a lot of country from here and definitely here a long ways. That night we saw a few elk right before dark, but not quite where we were looking for. It was a little slow, but we like where we're set up and we're looking forward to morning. Here on the first morning we packed in last night, saw probably about a dozen bulls or a dozen elk last night, two bulls, three bulls actually. We bugled a five point in with him, uh, called him into 50 yards, but woke up this morning, eased off the hill here. We got a little pocket, nice canyon here. We got three, maybe four bulls down in there going crazy. Uh, one bull's not off here too far, he's just down over the edge in the bottom here. Looks pretty thick dog hair stuff, so I don't know how uh, that's gonna be down there, but they're definitely charging up this morning. What a difference a day makes in a cold night. The next morning, this canyon was absolutely going crazy. These bulls are going nuts in here, so we decided to dump off, head down in there, and try our hand at calling one of these bulls in. When we got down in there, we started calling, but to these elk, we're just another bull partaking in the racket. So what we decided to do is just call, move a little bit, call, move a little bit. We're trying to make the best of the situation here and move in a little closer and closer in on one of these bugling bulls and try to get him close and try to get a shot at him. After a full morning of trying to call in one of these bulls, we decided to try a different strategy. We're going to try to intercept one of these bulls and get in front of him as he's working his way along this hillside and intercept him, maybe get a shot. It's a big ball. That's as close as it gets, folks. 20 yards, no shot. 
is thick timber. Um, I didn't think he was the big bull. From the sounds of his bugle, I thought he was maybe a little six-point satellite bull. Shoot. What a morning we've had. This is what bow hunting elk is all about. I've heard so many bugles this morning, I've got them ricocheting around in my head like a drum. I can't tell if they're real or if they're just echoes in between my ears. This was a lot of fun and this hunt is definitely starting off on the right foot. I can't wait for the evening hunt to come. We had these bulls going crazy in here this morning. At least three or bulls, maybe four. We pulled up on this ridge and start easing down now into this basin and try to get below him. The evening hunt didn't turn out like we'd hoped it would. The bulls came out right before dark and started calling a little late in the afternoon and the wind started playing tricks on us so we didn't get too aggressive with it. We did find this younger six point bull right after shooting light. But that's okay, he's a young bull. Maybe we'll come back and look for him in a few years. After we hiked up out of that steep canyon after dark, by the headlamps, we made it back to camp, and we were hungry and beat. So we had a mountain house and hit the sack, hoping for better luck in the morning. Well, we packed up camp here. We're gonna move down the ridge, next ridge over and down, kind of where we were yesterday when we got, got into all those elk. It must be 85, feels like 95 degrees, so it's gonna be a pretty hot run over there, but once we get off the edge, we'll be in the shade, it'll be a lot better. got here is we're uh, packed down lower on the mountain. We're about mid-level. That's where the elk seem to be hanging out. We got our BV camp set up as you can see. So we're going to camp right in the middle of them. But one of the keys to doing this is you can't be noisy and you can't start a fire. We got our camp set up. We've got two bulls already growling over here in this one drainage. Just a little bit above us, that's perfect because the wind, uh, uh, wind's coming down already into this basin. So we're gonna sneak over here, and listen, and kind of try to dial in on them. They went a bull down below us, so we're right in the middle of them. So we're gonna go see what happens, move over there, and try to hunt that big bull. We spotted this bull all by his lonesome. He's a perfect candidate to try to call in. So Nate drops back about 75 yards, pops up the Montana decoy and starts in on his calling sequence to try to lure this bull right in past Mills and I.
it's official that uh, moving the camp was definitely a, a good idea. We moved the camp. No sooner did we get it set up, we walked around the corner, we're into bulls. Just wasn't right. I mean, it doesn't work every time. That bull came into 35 yards, straight in, hung up, was looking at us, whatever, trying to figure out what's going on. He wouldn't turn broadside. Then he did turn broadside. He did like those stupid bulls will do. I hate it when they do this. I shouldn't say stupid, they're smart. They come around and circle downwind from us, and man, he hit the wind and you see a 600 pound animal turn inside out down through this nasty junk. After laying in that pup tent all night, listen to those bulls scream and keep me awake, it wasn't very hard to get up nice and early and hit the trail. Well, we dropped down off this ridge from camp. We got the wind just right. It's coming straight down. And uh, there's a bull right here in this, this old growth timber. It's a perfect place to get a shot and do a calling sequence because it's way more open than this brushy stuff. So we're gonna ease up into this a little ways, find a good spot set up, see if we can call that bull in. I think he's only about 200 yards uphill. In this old growth timber, you can see it's a lot easier to get a shot. Mills and I got right to the edge of it, right at 20 yards. I picked an opening, ranged it, and just waited for him to drag right on through it. Just called perfect and drug him right through that shot lane, shooting lane. As soon as his shoulder came clear in there, poof, only about 23 yards. Worked out perfect, so let's go see if we can find our arrow anyway. You know, I felt good about the shot. At only 23 yards, I was nice and calm. But you know, after walking over there and not finding any blood, couldn't find my arrow, we reround the tape and couldn't tell anything from the tape of where I hit, things were getting a little nerve wracking. There's blood, you see that? See that right there? That's blood. We, uh, this, is a, this is a good lesson for all you guys who are just starting to bow hunt, especially for elk, they're big animals. I shot that bull, I heard it hit, but we couldn't find the arrow or anything. We tracked it just on his track. Literally, I'm not kidding, 200 yards before we saw any blood. And, you know, if a guy wasn't sure of a shot or something and uh, just followed it 100 yards, he would have gone off and started hunting again. This bull would rot. But you don't always get blood right away. Weird things can happen with these elk. They're big bodied animals, but we're happy to see this blood. There's no doubt I hit him now. But like I said, for 200 yards, we didn't see any blood. 
Nate made the right call. Nate said, let's wait four hours. So we literally waited four hours. We never bumped him. Now we're tracking him. Found this blood. We've got good blood here. This is gonna be a dead bull. Mission accomplished. Here's the bull. As you can see, he's just a beautiful six point public land Idaho bull. We've been in bulls every single day. Draw my bow back a few times, but uh, this morning it just happened with this guy at 24 yards. Couldn't happen any sweeter. Nate just called him, drug him right past me, 24 yards, had a perfect shooting lane and just anchored right on him, released. Boom, hit him. Not much blood, like we said, but he was obviously hit real hard and only made about 250 yards. And here we are, the fruits of our labor right here. So until next time, we'll see you right here on Eastman's Hunting TV. And remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game.